It is that time of year again as we close the curtains in 2023 and we acknowledge the good, the bad and the ugly based on the products and ideas hitting the market this year. We have gathered the troops, made a checklist and checked it twice and dished out the official Soya Chicha Awards for 2023. Like last year, there are a lot of categories to go through but it is our way to recognize the remarkable effort, products and ideas brought forth by the companies each year. The Soya Chicha Awards 2023 will be split into several categories. So make sure you check out them all out below. Here, you will see all the smartphones that defined 2023. A change from last year where we included tablets and wearables in the same category. As for the nomination process, we held an open nomination process involving the whole Soya Chicha team to gather the entries for this category to get as many POVs as possible. We then compiled and shortlisted the nominations before a panel of experts to decide on the winners. Here are the winners of Soya Jin Chow's Best Smartphone of the Year category. The POCO F5 is our pick for the best value phone for 2023. Why? It is one of the few phones in its price range to be powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon chip and is the only one in Malaysia to feature the upper mid-range 7 Plus Gen 2. So it should offer plenty of performance when paired up with 12GB of RAM. The rest of the spec sheet reads like a flagship's phone. A large 6.67-inch AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate, a 64MP main camera, a 5000mAh battery, 67W wired fast charging, and even an IR blaster. That's awful a lot for something that just starts from Ringgit Malaysia 1399. Samsung isn't very well known for offering value in the mid-range segment, but its unmatched 4 years of Android software support made the Galaxy A series very easy to recommend. This year, the company gave the A34 a larger 6.6-inch AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate, finally, plus a MediaTek Dimensity 1080 chip. It's still mostly adequate rather than spectacular, but the design now is the splitting image of the S23 flagship. While the IP67 dust and water resistance remain a standout feature at this price. Our Bahasa Malaysia colleague Najib says the Infinix GT10 Pro is THE affordable gaming phone to own. He's not wrong. For just over a thousand ringgit, you get a MediaTek Dimensity 8050 chip that ran all of his favorite games without breaking a sweat. And this large vapor chamber means it won't burn your fingers even when gaming at full tilt. At 120Hz refresh rate, 45W PD 3.0 fast charging, bypass charging, and listing packaging that doubles as a speaker amplifier and you get a complete game experience that doesn't break the bank. Sometimes, a surprise can appear from out of nowhere to impress us. This time around, it is the Xiaomi 13 T-Series. It is a combination of features along with the price that Xiaomi has decided to attach to this smartphone series. What do you get with the Xiaomi 13 T series? Plenty! A 144Hz display, up to 12GB of RAM, and even an IP68 rating for water and dust resistance. The Xiaomi 13 T features the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 Ultra, while the Xiaomi 13 T Pro comes with the MediaTek Dimensity 9200 Plus. Not to mention that you get a Leica Tune camera at the pack and a 67W fast charging system for the 13T and 120W for the 13T Pro when you need to top up the 5000mAh battery super quick. Plus, Xiaomi promises 4 major OS updates and 5 years of security updates for the phone. Nothing built on the promise shown by last year's Phone 1 and finally giving the Phone 2 a flagship chip, last year's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Meanwhile, the head-turning design has been enhanced with greater functionality for the trademark illuminated glyph interface and curve back that makes it more comfortable to hold. Its beauty is also more than skin deep. I think OS 2.0 brings the futuristic monochromatic aesthetic to the user interface as well, all while keeping much of what makes stock Android so great. Sure, the price has risen commensurately, but this is a great, unique-looking phone to have under 3,000 ringgit. As we discussed, the Poco F5 is just a gem of a phone in a complete package. You get all the flagship-like features without paying flagship prices. 
And that's a win in our books, which is why it is on our list twice. Not only that, but the fact that it can be owned for about half the price of a flagship means that you don't need to pay for uh, features that you may not want to use. Poco included features that everyone needs and are doing it good enough for the layman. This category took us for a bit of a spin, as these days, most phones on the market can game adequately without carrying the name gaming phone. Even so, we are happy that Asus kept its ROG Phone 9 and the sixth iteration is one of the company's best. Yes, ROG Phone 7 Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip is shared with most regular flagship, but it's the 165Hz refresh rate with a cooling setup, touch sensitive shoulder button and broad suite of dedicated gaming tools that take the experience to the next level. Plus, if you buy the Aeroactive Cooler 7, you get enhanced audio thanks with the new built-in subwoofer. And even factoring the cooler's price, you save quite a bit over the ultimate version for what is essentially the same phone. There are boxy phones and there's the Great Magic 8S Pro. This sleek metallic brick uses presence on the Copian cable with its razor sharp corners and near bezel-less screen with an under display selfie camera. It has performance to spare too, thanks to the overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip shared with the Samsung Galaxy S23 and a built-in RGB fan that keeps the internals cool. Like the ROG 7, you get touch-sensitive triggers, several layers of cooling plates, and lots of gaming-specific menus to help ensure your marathon PUBG session is an enjoyable one. But its 120Hz refresh rate is quite low, and ultimately, the Red Magic brand lacked the cachet of Asus Torrid ROG. Apple has never really shouted about iPhone's gaming performance, even though its class link chip and unsurpassed third party game optimization make its devices the stealthy default choice for many gamers. With the iPhone 50 Pro Max, however, Cupertino has turned up the heat with the obscenely powerful A70 Pro chip built on a new 3 nanometer process and boasting hardware accelerated ray tracing for the first time. But the company clearly got too excited because it forgot to beef up the cooling system to combat the increased heat generated. As a result, games start to often and the phone gets so hot sometimes that it refuses to charge. Still, the iPhone 15 Pro Max deserves its spot here as it is the only device capable of playing AAA games with Resident Evil Village leading a roster of upcoming titles that also include Assassin's Creed, Mirage and Death Stranding. Impressive for something that still fits inside your pocket. Clearly, the it phone of the moment, the Samsung Galaxy Flip 5, is fun, powerful, and filled with features, all packed in a compact, snazzy-looking body. That large cover screen is great for running just about any app you can think of, be it social media, the camera, or even a game. Yes, you can even run games on the cover screen. And with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy chip and decent batteries and cameras, this is far more than just a pretty face. As second places go, this is not a bad place to be. The Oppo Find N3 is where the foldable smartphones reaches its zenith with impossibly premium design, a near creaseless inner display, world-class Hasselblad cameras, and conventional covered screen dimensions that makes the phone actually usable when close, unlike a certain competitor, a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. It has substance to boot thanks to a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, a unique split screen solution, Samsung reveling 4 years of Android updates, and impressive for the affordable battery life. The only fly in the ointment is the price. The fine entry is heinously expensive, even more so than the Z Fold 5. We got 2 out of 3 for Oppo here in our list, and with good reason. The Chinese tech giant has unsurped Samsung as a leader in foldables. The fine entry flip built on the success of its predecessor with an upgraded Hasselblad tuned triple camera setup that includes a telephoto shooter, a first for any flip phone. Unfortunately, the device suffers from having an unchanged 3.26 inch vertical cover screen, which matches the dimension of the cameras but also restricts its functionality when using other apps. This, 
along with the use of a MediaTek Dimensity 9200 instead of a flagship Snapdragon chip, makes the high price a bitter pill to swallow. This is it, our best phone of the year. Samsung threw everything and the kitchen sink at the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which features the customized Snapdragon 8 Gen 24 Galaxy chip, a headlining 200 megapixel camera, part of an impressive quad camera setup that will even space zoom to the moon, even though it's mostly AI fakery. On top of that, there are all the good bits carried over from the S22 Ultra, which includes the glorious 6.8 inch 1440p AMOLED display, the built in S Pen that makes the Ultra a true descendant of the Galaxy Note. Other flagship may have surpassed in some areas, but as far as all rounders are concerned, the S23 Ultra is still king. The Find M3 impressed me so much that I told the team which, if it arrived early in the year, I would have bought it one instead of the S23 Ultra. It is as complete as a package as foldable get, enough to make you wonder if the hefty price aside, it can legitimately compete with the best flagship outright. The fact it was shaded by the S23 Ultra by just one vote among our panel tell you everything that you need to know. Oppo may have been late in bringing the Find N series to the global market, but it came out swinging. The third best phone of the year for Soi Chin Chao, this year goes to Xiaomi's latest entry, the Xiaomi 13 t Pro. We took a look at the phone and are happy that Xiaomi is returning to its roots of delivering the best value and performance for not much money. The Xiaomi 13T Pro delivers everything in spades and we are just taking it all with a green on our face. There you have it, our list of the best smartphone of the year. What do you think about the list? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Leave a comment down below. Share with us what's your best smartphone of the year. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, X, Instagram and TikTok where you can get all the latest news about tech and everything else. This is Sharil, signing off. <laughs>